In the last tutorial we created this very smooth platform movement, but I think we can all agree that without any animations it looks pretty boring. So let's learn how to turn this into this. If you haven't got the assets yet, remember you can get them completely for free from my itch.io page. ptit.itch.io First we need to import our assets to Unity. In order to do that we simply drag and drop the file into the project files. Then we click on a sprite. Make sure the selected texture type is sprite to the end UI. This will give us access to the settings we need. First, change the pixel per unit to 64, as the asset pack has been created for 64 by 64 grid size. Then, change sprite mode from single to multiple, as our file contains multiple sprites. Click apply and open the sprite editor. In the sprite editor, we simply slice the file into multiple sprites using the slice button. Unity will treat each slice as a separate sprite. Sometimes the automatic slicing doesn't work the way we would like it, so we have to adjust the size of the sprites ourselves. We also need to adjust the position of the pivot point. Pivot point is like a center of mass of the sprite. Position of that point affects all the transformations that affect the sprite. For example, rotations. The sprite will rotate around that specific point. Setting it wrong way may lead to very unexpected behavior, especially when animating. After everything is ready, we simply click Apply and close the sprite editor. We create an empty object to hold all the sprites together. We name it Viking. We drop all of the Viking parts into the scene or into the hierarchy editor. We give all of them meaningful names. In case of very similar sprites, you can use the pivot point to distinguish between their right and left variant. We need to reparent certain sprites to make sure they move the right way. For example, if we rotate body, we want the arms and the head to rotate as well. That means both hands and the head should be children of the body sprite. Now we assemble the Viking by putting all the parts in the right positions. We will also need to adjust the sprites order in layer in order for some of them to be in front and for some of them to be in the back of the Viking. Some minor adjustments and our Viking is ready. Let's get animating. Currently, our character always looks right. What if somebody tries to attack him from the left? Let's help our little Viking out. To make the character look in the direction he's walking, we simply flip its local scale in x-axis. We'll start with creating apply walking direction method. In this method we simply capture the horizontal input and modify the local scale. We'll use for that sign method. It simply returns 1 or minus 1 depending on the input. It's perfect opportunity to create a new method to capture input and store it in a class variable. This will make our code a little bit more maintainable. Now we'll implement the update method. We'll simply put there our newly written code. In case you are wondering what are the differences between update and fixed update, I link the tutorial in which I'm talking about it. Let's test our changes. It turns out we have a small problem. Our code works when the character is moving, but as soon as it stops, it looks right. Let's fix that. This is the problematic line. The sign method returns 1 not only for positive numbers, but also for 0. In order to fix that, we simply check if our input is different than zero. 
Let's test it out. Boom! Everything working as expected. I'm disabling gizmos so they do not get in my way when I'm animating. Then I create folders to keep my animations in one place. We need to open the animation window. Make sure your character is selected and then simply create new animation. I will call mine idle. Animating in Unity is fairly simple. Once you press the red record button, everything you do will be stored as small dots on this timeline. Those dots are called keyframes. Once you choose different time, frame to be exact, and modify something in the scene, Unity will try to make the animation by filling all the states between previous keyframe and the current one. Let's create the idle animation. On the frame 30 I'm lowering the body a little bit. This will make our character look like it's breathing. Unity automatically filled in the first frame with the original position. Because I want the animation to loop, I will copy the keyframe and paste it on the frame 60. Fantastic! Now I will add a little bit of head movement as well. As previously I need to fill in the last frame. To make the animation much more interesting, I will add a little bit of rotation to both arms. If you accidentally create the keyframes in the wrong position, you can simply drag them to the correct one. I felt like something is still missing, so I decided to try to add a little bit of movement to the head. Fantastic! Walking animation is a little bit more complicated. Let me break it down for you as much as possible. The numbers above the character head indicate different height positions. If you look closely, you'll notice that the top of the character follows exactly the same path from point A to B as from B to C. The character is at the lowest position, at points 2. That's the moment when it touches the ground. That's the first thing to remember. The second one is that usually legs and arms go in opposite ways. That means if the left arm is going to the front, the left leg will be going to the back. And lastly, the third one, probably the most important. The legs and arms of the character start and finish in exactly the same position. If they start spread, that means they will also finish spread. Thus, in the middle of animation, they have to be crossed. Simply saying, the arms and legs follow exactly the same path from the middle to end as from front to middle, but in reverse. Enough theory, let's make the animation. First we create new animation and save it. Before making any changes, make sure you press the red record button and that you are modifying the right animation. In the first and last frame of the animation, our character will have slightly spread apart legs. We change the frame to the middle one and make the legs cross each other. Fantastic! We create two additional frames between start and the middle of the animation. In the first one, we lower the body and in the second one, we rise it. The body will follow exactly the same path in the second half of the animation, so we can simply copy and paste the same frames. I'm not very happy with the result, so I'm adjusting the timing a little bit. I'm adding the arms movement. Oh well. I made them moving in the wrong direction. So I simply drag and drop the keyframes in the right places. And fixed. At this very moment the animation could be considered ready, but I want to add a little bit more life to the character. To achieve it I will add some movement to the head. To change the duration of the animation, 
I simply select all of the keyframes, grab the bar on the right and drop it a little bit to the left. Fantastic! Now we will create a simple jump animation. It will consist of only one frame and later on we will use the power of Unity to nicely transition to and from it. I'm going for a little bit cartoony animation. I want the character to look up, have the legs spread apart and lowered arms. For this animation we can disable looping. In order to do that you simply click on the animation file and uncheck the loop time checkbox. Then I will create also the fall animation where the character will be looking a little bit down, have the arms raised up and legs a little bit closer to each other. Let's also disable looping for this one. Now we will connect the animations to each other. First open the animator window. Ah, let's tidy up a little bit. To make the transition you simply click right on the state and select make transition. Let's allow our character to transition easily from the idle state to walk and the other way around. Jumping is a little bit more complicated. A lot of people love to use for it any state. As the name suggests, it will allow our character to transition to jumping from any state. But I prefer to carefully design all the transitions myself. Let's allow our character to transition to jump from idle and walk state. And the other way around. Sometimes the jump will be so short that we will want to skip the fall part. Then of course let's make the transition from jump to fall. Once we fall, we can transition to walk or idle. Sometimes we may drop from the platform, so of course we also want to transition from walk and idle to fall. Now we'll be setting up the conditions for transitions. First we'll create the is walking parameter. We want to swap between the walk and idle state depending on the value of this parameter. Then we'll create yet another boolean parameter, is grounded. For all the transitions from idle and walk to jump and fall, we want to check if the is grounded is false. We'll also introduce one more parameter, vertical velocity. It will hold the value of the y velocity of the rigid body attached to the character. If the vertical velocity will be greater than zero, that means the character is jumping. If it will be less than zero, that means the character is falling. So logically for both transitions from idle and walk to jump, we need to add extra condition. Check if the vertical velocity is greater than zero. Similarly, we need to add the condition if the vertical velocity is less than zero for the transitions to fall. Transition from jumping to fall should happen on two conditions. Firstly, we should check if the character is not grounded and secondly, check if the vertical velocity is less than zero. The transitions from jump and fall to idle and walk will depend also on two conditions. Is grounded should be set always to true and depending if the character is walking or not, we should transition to idle or to walk. For all the animations, let's uncheck has exit time, fixed duration and set the transition duration to zero. We'll talk about those values in a moment. Now a very exciting moment, I will show you how to test the animations. Let's detach and resize the animator window so we can see it and the character at the same time. Once we click play, we can modify the parameters directly in the animator window. That allows us not only to check how the transitions look, but also if they happen at the right time. Looks like everything works as expected. The only issue is some of the transitions look a little bit raw. Would be nice to have some animations added to them. But first, let's add the animations to our platform movement script. We create the variable to store the reference to our animator. Then we grab and assign it in the start method. Do you remember the parameters we set up in the animator? Now we have to assign values to them. I will do that 
in apply animations method. For the ease walking I will simply check if there is any horizontal input. For ease grounded we conveniently have already written a method. And for the vertical velocity we simply assign the rigid's body y velocity. It's very bad coding practice to use string literals in code. There are multiple ways we can address that. I'm using the power of my IDE to generate this line. As you can see, it simply created the read-only integer variable that stores the ID of the parameter from the animator. If it looks too scary, don't worry. You can simply create a const that will store the name of the parameter. Because I'm lazy, I will simply go with the solution provided by my IDE. Last thing to do is to add our apply animations to the update method. Let's test it out. Fantastic! As we've seen, the animations look a little bit raw. Let me show you what transition duration can do for us in that regard. We can test our animations using the preview of the animator window. Once we set the transition duration, Unity will try to use that time to smoothly switch from first animation to the second one. For all transitions to jump and fall, let's set it to point 2. For all others, to point 1. Let's test the final result. Much better. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you learned something new, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Love you and bye bye.